this easy recipe for a home style chickpea curry or chola masala is going to be amazing. Chickpeas are full, packed of protein and this arguably is one of the best and tastiest ways to enjoy chickpeas. So let's get started right now and see how to make this simple chickpea curry. So here I've soaked my chickpeas for at least four to six hours and I'm gonna drain the water and cook it in the instant pot with some cloves and then some bay leaf. These whole spices are gonna really flavor the chickpeas and the water it cooks in and we're gonna use that water in our curry itself. We'll also add in a bit of cinnamon, about one to half inch piece, and then season it with some salt. Now fill this up with enough water and close the instant pot. We can cook this for at least 13 to 15 minutes on high pressure. And once it's cooked, it should look something like this. As you can see, the chickpeas are fork tender and they are delicious melt in your mouth. Cook it for longer if your chickpeas are still hard inside. Now let's start prepping our veggies. So all you're gonna need are some onions, tomatoes, ginger and garlic. It's just a matter of fact that I forgot I was pureeing it so I went the extra way of finally chopping the onions and pureeing the ginger and garlic. For you, you can just use the whole cloves of garlic, ginger and just roughly diced onions for the puree. And the case is similar for the tomatoes. I completely forgot we are pureeing, so I finally diced. But you're gonna need one tomato for this recipe. So once chopped, add your ginger, garlic, and onions into a food processor, with a bit of water, and then puree into a smooth paste. Set this aside into a bowl and do the same thing with the tomato. Again, you don't have to finally chop it, you don't have to forget to read the recipe before you make it and puree the tomatoes into a puree as well. Perfect. You can just set that aside in the container itself because nothing else needs to be pureed after this. Next, this is a very interesting ingredient. This is called tamarind and it comes from a tropical tree which usually grows in Africa, India and Pakistan. We only need a tiny bit since it's very strong and it tends to be sweet and sour which is key to any good chickpea curry. So put this in some hot water and just let it soak. Okay now let's start preparing our actual curry. So heat up some ghee in a wok or a large pot and then once hot add in your cumin seeds and a pinch of hing. Just saute this until it starts to become fragrant and then add in your pureed ginger, garlic and onion paste. You want to bring this up to a simmer and wait until the color starts to change. Right now we are creating what's called the masala which is the main base of our curry. If you have a good masala, once we turn it into a curry by adding water, it's going to be packed full of flavor. The masala is the key to any curry. The color has changed to a really light golden brown. Now we're gonna add in our chana masala. Now I use a pre-made masala because that's just the kind of flavor that I'm used to growing up with. But feel free to look up a recipe to make homemade chana masala. We're also gonna add in a bit of turmeric and this is gonna start creating the initial flavor profile of our curry. You can see we added a lot of that chana masala because we're not adding any ground cumin or ground coriander. The chana masala has a mix of these whole spices in it already. So we are taking full advantage of this spice. If interested, I'll link the spice that I'm using in the description box down below. So give it all a quick mix and you wanna cook this until the oil starts to separate from the sides of the masala. Another indicator that the masala is cooked is that it releases from the pan very easily and just slides across the pan. You want to stir this every minute or so 
So once the masala is cooked, just like right now, add in your pureed tomatoes. And now we want to do the same set of steps with the tomatoes added. We're gonna cook this until the masala becomes nice and dry. The whole concept of drying out the excess moisture and then at the end, adding in more moisture by making the gravy, it's based on a very simple premise. We are drying out our onions, ginger, garlic, and tomatoes along with the spices to cook them out. If we added just water into raw pureed ginger, garlic, onion, and tomatoes, well, the gravy will taste like nothing. So once the tomatoes come up to a simmer, add in your salt and a little bit of deggy mirch. Now give this a nice mix and same premise. We're gonna stir this every minute or so and cook this on medium to medium high heat with the lid on. That will help speed up the cooking process of the tomatoes. So it should take you about seven to 15 minutes to get from the tomato stage from earlier to right now. So be patient and really Take your time to cook down that masala. And that looks perfect to me. Since we've already added the salt, you can taste this right now and see if it's to your preference. Keep in mind, this masala will be more stronger and pungent than when we have added the gravy because the water would dilute these flavors. Now it's time to add in the chickpeas which we just cooked earlier. So for now, just add in the chickpeas themselves and release any masala that's getting stuck at the bottom of the pan. So right now, we're just going to be roasting our chickpeas with that masala to really help get those flavors inside the chickpeas. Cook it for a few minutes and then let's add in our tamarind, which we had soaked in water earlier. Just squeeze it once it has soaked and then strain it through a sieve. It'll come out very easily and all the good sweet and sour flavors, we can extract that with the help of a wooden spoon. This adds a wonderful layer of complexity into the flavor of the gravy with the spice, aromatics, sweet and sour. Give it a really good mix and now it's time to create our gravy. So add in enough water. If you want it to be a thick gravy, add a bit more because we want the flavors to come together before we serve. So we want it to simmer for a few minutes. Now at this stage, you can taste and season as per your preference. As you can see now, it has reduced and it's much thicker. And this is perfect for me. If you want it to be thicker, keep simmering it. If you want it to be thinner, stop earlier. And look at that. How good does that look? That's just perfect to me. And coming from me, who was not always a big fan of chickpeas, I'm telling you while editing this, my mouth is watering. Now all the step to do is garnish it with some fresh chopped cilantro and mix it all up. And that's all that it takes to make a great chickpea curry. But let me show you how much better it looks as I'm serving it in a few moments. Now this is honestly looking very good. It looks restaurant style even though it was intended to be a home style cooked chickpea curry. Now there's so much you can have this with. Classics being rice and roti but with puri, with naan, with paratha, anything with kulcha, bhatura, try it. Let me know. This is very easy and you all are going to love it. There's just such great simple flavors in this chickpea curry and your kitchen is going to smell even better. 
So go ahead and start soaking up those chickpeas for your dinner and let me know how it turns out. I really want to know. Let me know how it turns out. Let me know if you have any feedback. I'm going to go and enjoy the leftovers from last night and I'll let you know how that was. Follow me on Instagram for all the other food videos and posts that I make. Go ahead and hit subscribe. Hit that bell icon so you don't miss out on my next video and I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye guys.